What's going on guys, Asian Guy here bringing you a showcase of a max level end game Zhongli with the new staff of Homer, the new polearm that just came out and we will be comparing this to the other polearm that's very popular on Zhongli, not the Vortex Vanquisher but the Primordial Jade Wing Spear. Both of these two spears are very good DPS spears for Zhongli, whether you want to build him as a bruiser, as a main DPS or even as a support DPS. Full on support, you should really be using Black Tassel to give him all the HP that you can get staff of homer is good on him as support as well but more so as a support dps than a flat out support so the first thing i'm going to show you guys is the build because i don't want to mislead you guys to think that this is easily accessible this is a very very end game build i've spent an insane insane amount of time farming for Zhongli's artifact. So what do we have here? We've got 27,200 HP, 1,963 attack, and we also have got 76.4% crit rate and 144% crit damage with 140% energy recharge. Really fantastic numbers here and 90% geo damage bonus. I'm not going to BS you guys. There is going to be a big damage difference because I have Constellation 6 on Zhongli, which gives me talent levels on his E and also on his ultimate. So we do have 8, 12, 13. But I I want to show you guys is my own personal Zhongli and of course even regardless of the talent levels you'll be able to see the damage difference between the two spears and the two pole arms rather and come to your own conclusions while scaling it downwards maybe for your own Zhongli or if you do have the talent levels for Zhongli then you'll be able to get a better idea of what to look for so first of all we're going to be looking at primordial jade wing spear and then of course we will be using the staff of homer as well I will be changing the build around for the staff of homer a little bit because if you take a look here I go down to 54% crit rate guys which is simply not good enough at the end game you want to be going for at least 70 percent and that's what i will be doing i will be changing my artifacts around to compensate for that but that is the main point i want to raise first before we even get into the comparison guys is that each of these spears both of them are really good for essentially every single kind of player because everyone has different luck when it comes to rng and the artifacts you get if you have a really good crit rate helmet then you want a crit damage spear if you have a really good crit damage helmet then you want the crit rate spear and vice versa so i'm sure everyone understands why hopefully everyone understands what i'm trying to say here so let's begin we'll start with this we'll do this and then we're going to walk through that so zongli i need you to maintain your shield here i need you to maintain your shield here as we do the ultimate kaboom 167k damage there 167k damage there with maximum stacks so let's leave here for a moment we're going to leave here for a moment we had maximum stacks with the Primordial Jade Wing Spear. We had the Bennett Ultimate, and we did walk through the Ningguan Gate as well. And we also had the Double Geo Resonance bonus in action. However, the setup for that, guys, did you see what a pain in the ass that was? Did you see what a pain in the ass that was? Getting the max stats on the Zhongli Spear for the Jade Spear there, it's just a pain in the butt. And I will show you guys what it's like to do that with Staff of Homer. Okay, so what I also want to show you guys is a quick tip for anyone that wants to test out their own builds. This is the place to come to if you want to recharge your ultimates. So this right here in Liyue, top left corner, right here, I have a pin marked here called Malphite. Because let's be real guys, if you ever play League of Legends or you Google Malphite, it's literally him. That's literally Malphite, but looks a little bit cooler. But League of Legends trivia aside, let's switch the weapon to the Staff of Homer and exchange for sacrificing a significant amount of energy recharge. I'm going to change the goblet so that we get an insane amount of crit rate. We are going to lose attack stat from here as well and crit damage bonus. But of course, the spear, Staff of Homer, makes up for that. And we actually have more HP and more attack than the Jade Spear build. We have 6% less crit rate. We have more crit damage, significantly more crit damage, guys. Basically, 60% more crit damage. But we have 13% less energy recharge charge meaning our ultimates are going to come up less and there's always the argument guys with dps is damage per second in the space of 10 minutes guys with the jade spear build i'm going to have more ultimates than i'm going to have with the staff of homer build but the staff of homer build should in theory do more damage so 167k keep that one in mind so this is how i recharge my ultimates for my characters we've got geo particles here we're going to absorb that with zhongli we've got bennett so we're going to absorb his pyro particle yep right there we're going to go to shao get three sets of animo particles all of that absorbed and the ultimate is straight back up and then just like this all my ults are back up and i have not taken any damage either and then we're just going to go straight back up to the golden house domain so hopefully we should be able to see a big damage difference here. 
with the Staff of Homer, there is no need to stack up your damage with the Jade Spear, unlike the Jade Spear, so that's the massive, massive bonus. It's just faster. You switch to Zhongli, boom, put the Bennett ult down, run through the Ningguang Gate and Ultimate. Hopefully, I can nail that and not make a mistake. And the main thing here, guys, is hopefully I can hit a crit. If I don't hit, if I don't hit a crit, I'm going to have to re-record all of this. So that's going to be a pain in the butt. I really hope that is not the case. We're going to run through the gate here. We're going to do this, right? Just to be certain, I'm going to run through the gate again and then boom. We didn't crit, guys. We didn't crit. So, I'll see you again in a moment. That's awkward, isn't it? This time round, guys, I promise, we're going to crit. So I've forgotten the number now, but I'm going to say 167k. <laughs> I'm going to say 167k, guys. I hope that is right. Right, boom. We'll put that out there. We'll put that out there. Oh, right. I've got to get the Ningguang gate up properly. We're going to run through that gate. We've run through the gate. Boom. How much? I mean, 170k. And we don't have to do like an annoying build up with, um, you know, in the same sense that the Jade Spear, you need to have maximum stacks on it. So... The next comparison is obviously going to be when the Staff of Homer wielder, in this case Zhongli, is under 50% HP. Now, to the Zhongli shrimps out there, the big Zhongli stands, I'm very sorry for what I'm about to do. This hurts me as well, guys. Trust me. When I say this hurts, it hurts. But the fastest way to put Zhongli at low HP, guys, because the problem here when I'm using Bennett is Bennett is going to heal my Zhongli. Well, that was anticlimactic. Oh. Okay, well, Zhongli is dead. I'm going to revive him. He now has 150 HP. <laughs> okay. Oh, hello, Crystal. How convenient. Well, he now has 150 HP. We're going to charge up his ultimate here. Slowly but surely, we'll charge up his ultimate again. But obviously, when Zhongli is standing in the Bennett ultimate, he's still healing, right? Even though you can't move and try to avoid the healing he's still going to be healed so that's a bit of a problem that we're going to try and avoid and let's get that down i don't want to heal i have c6 only oh i healed there so bennett's healing is quite good so i need to be careful not to take hits here because i don't want to be healing with my zhongli but i do want to collect his particles oh i missed the particles there i switched a bit too early right zhongli pillar yep Okay, Bennett, give him the fire particle. Okay, Zhongli's got one. Okay, nice, clean, clean, clean. Now we just need one from Bennett. And there we go. Okay, that should be comfortably under 50%. I don't think Bennett, in the space of my old animation, because it's a very long old animation, would be able to heal me enough to break my 50%. So if you didn't know, Staff of Homer, under 50% HP, you get a significant attack bonus. Before, it was around 2,000 attacks, slightly under 2,000 attack. Right now, it's 2,293 attacks. So let's put the shield up. We don't want to take hits. We're going to drop the Bennett ultimate. We're going to put this down. We're going to run through that. And then we're going to ultimate here. Kaboom. 183k, guys. 183k. Very, very nice. And the attack bonus is at 3,000 now. So, there you have it. The Staff of Homer, when it does crit, is obviously going to do more than the crit rate spear and Jade spear. But, the damage is less consistent. When I say the damage is less consistent, I mean the number of times you're going to see the big ultimate crit is going to appear less. So, it's up to you. Do you prefer the consistency in crit rate or do you prefer that every now and then you are going to hit that massive, big schlong along, big PP damage. This is something I'm genuinely curious about, by the way, guys. So please do leave a comment in the comment section letting me know. Do you prefer, are you team crit rate or are you team crit damage? Obviously, best of both, both worlds is the way you want to go. But realistically speaking, we all know how artifacts are, guys. You, you either get crit rate or crit damage. For me, I have no good crit damage pieces. I only have crit rate. So Staff of Homer for me is like a dream weapon. But if I had really good crit damage mask, then I could bring out the full potential of the Jade Spear as well. Next up, what I want to show you guys, okay, is physical Zhongli. Now, this was a very controversial topic back in the day. If you guys know, you guys know that it was a very controversial topic because, you know, there were calculations 
there were demonstrations that Shangling with the Crescent Pike was superior to Zhongli with the Crescent Pike. And understandably, that made a lot of people very, very angry. And I understand that. But Shangling with the Crescent Pike, low-key pretty strong, guys. If we're being honest, low-key pretty strong. But this is going to be the showcase for my Zhongli Belide physical damage build. And the reason why I'm going with Belide here, guys, is because of the shield strength. It's so nice having 35% shield strength while you're just unleashing an onslaught of your attacks, your normal attack string, which looks absolutely gorgeous on Zhongli. It's really, really nice. So as you can see, unfortunately, crit rate is not great. 53.2%. Crit damage is phenomenally high, maybe too high. The balance is not good. I would happily sacrifice 20% crit damage here, guys, for 20% crit rate. But that's a fantasy world we live in. 50% shield strength is obscenely high. That's so, so good. And then energy recharge, of course, is very, very poor here. So you know what? I am going to try and get my ultimate back here because I just want to show to you guys how much ultimate damage you can still do like this. So let's build up the ult for Zhongli. Claim all of these particles for Zhongli. All of those animal particles were collected by Zhongli as well. Let's collect these particles as well. And then we're going to put the Ningguan gate up again. Get some geo particles. Got that for Zhongli. As you can see, guys, without the 140% energy recharge, building up ult here is really slow. That took a long time. That took a long time. We're going to do a physical damage team comp as well. So there's no need for Bennett's ultimate because Bennett does not fit into a physical damage team comp with Zhongli. You ideally want to have two Geo and a Cryo, and on top of that, you want to have an Electro. Now, the characters I'm going to be using to showcase this are going to be the main Traveler. We're going to have Diona, and we're going to have also... You can either go official, or you can also go with Razor here. Now, Razor, if you do have the Constellation, which lowers enemies defense i believe it is going to be constellation four actually lowers enemies defense by 15 percent razor is going to be really really nice for the physical damage combination if you have c6 official that's going to be absolutely phenomenal it's going to be amazing but without further ado let's go ahead and get started with this i have very very high hopes for this I have already tried Crescent Pike with the Belide, and I did want to show people this, but I also wanted to wait for the Staff of Homer as well. So let's put the shield up. I'm going to put the shield up, and then we're going to do this. Apply Cryo here. We're going to do this, and let's take a look what we're going to be hitting here. 8.5k, 10k, guys. 10k, very good, very good charge attack. Can't do that. How much is the ultimate going to hit for? 27k. Very, very small PP. But unfortunately, you did not crit. We got 10k there, guys, just now. 10k. Very, very solid damage there. No super conduct. I believe I missed there. So we are going to do this again. Boom. How much does the charge attack hit for? 19k! 19k, guys! Now. Now, now, now. Behave. Hold on a moment here, Zongli. Behave yourself. 19k. That is some big PP damage, guys. That is some really, really, really big PP damage. And I'm very, very happy to see that. 17k with the Razor debuff expired. Let's put this back on again. No crit. No crit. No crit. Oh, well, he's just died. We didn't get any crits off, but there was consistently 7k, 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 7k. Physical damage with Belied, meaning your shield is virtually unkillable, is phenomenal. This is looking absolutely gorgeous. I want to see how big his ult damage is if we crit. So, oh, 19k with the Traveler. Hello. Okay, well, let's put this down. How much are you going to hit for? No! Why can't you crit, please? So, this is the Staff of Homer's drawback, guys. You really need to have good crit rate artifacts. Oh, and this is going to take so long to charge up his ult, guys. It's going to take so long. To charge up his ultimate. Right. Okay. A few hours later. 19k again. My, my Traveler hits really hard, guys. Well, Traveler build, guys. I know some people are going to watch this and be curious. How the hell? 20k. Okay, I promise, guys. I will have a Traveler build showcase eventually. Eventually, I will show it to you guys. Don't you worry. Okay, we're almost there. We're almost there, guys. Listen, we're almost there. Okay, we're almost there. Zhongli Ultimate is up. Here we go. This should crit. We're inside this circle, which gives us higher crit rate, right? 63.2%. And we didn't crit again. 
How, can I tank this shoot? Can I tank that? Only 6.3k damage with the mark, guys. So that is the belied strength shield, or the shield with the belied. So that's a lot. That normally will one-shot anyone. And I'm just gonna kill him here because I'm kind of sick that I'm not I'm not hitting. I'm not hitting crits with the ultimate. I wanted to showcase to you guys what that looked like, but here we go. Whatever. Boom. Physical damage, charge attack, 19.3k. That is juicy. That is juicy. We're not critting again though, but there you go. 19.3k with the belied. Beg your pardon. We are going to try. I am gonna try and show you guys, even with the physical damage gobbler, even with the physical damage build. According to my gut feeling, I'm not going to say calculations or guesstimations, Zhongli's ult should still hit 70k here. Now that's obviously 100k less than the Geo damage build, which is no slouch. You are, you are losing a lot of damage there. Okay, we got some particles back. Let's get particles back here again. Let's get some particles. Oh, we didn't get the thingy me bob there. That's a shame. Let's get some particles back here. Okay, very good. Let's head on over back to the child domain. The child domain is the easiest place to test stuff, guys, because in phase one, he can take essentially an infinite amount of damage, if I'm not mistaken, because he will just overlap into his second phase and not take damage. He'll be immune to damage for a certain amount of time, but he's still taking that damage. And what I just said made absolutely no sense at all, but I hope you guys are still sticking with me and bearing with me here. So let's begin. Let's get that down. Please, crit! 74.7k not bad at all so yeah as i guessed it is over 70k even with this build but naturally the main thing that you're going to be looking for here is the physical damage let's do that and then boom no crit again there's a crit so critting half the time is mm, it's okay guys uh this this build could definitely be worked on it's not the best build in the world i'm not going to pretend that it is 17k let's put the shield on boom and do we get a crit hit uh no energy you hate to see it physical damage builds worst enemy it's also the worst enemy for physical damage kaching is if you don't have stamina you're gonna be in for a world of pain so superconduct i think he superconducted himself there oh that's the, that's the wrong thing okay let's do that let's do that and then boom 17k okay so there you go that's physical damage only as well i'm gonna tell you right now with the jade spear it's okay I think the Crescent Pike is better than the Jade Spear when it comes to physical damage Zhongli. You do have to play around it very, very, very annoyingly. Crescent Pike does demand that you have to be absorbing elemental particles to get the second hit off. You know what? I'm just going to show it to you guys, the Crescent Pike. My Crescent Pike is not level 90 though, so please do keep that in mind. The Spears I have showed you or the Pole Arms I have showed you already are all level 90. So the Jade Wing Spear and the Staff of Homer. But Crescent Pike, I know a lot of people have asked for this. The attack goes down, the HP goes down, crit rate is still the same, crit damage is it's actually not bad there. Crit damage is not bad there, energy recharge not looking great, shield, strength is still solid, but physical damage bonus all the way up to 89.8%. So we were able to hit very much 20k, essentially 20k on the charge attack. Now we have a physical damage spear, but this spear is better off just using your normal attack string instead of your charge attacks. But just for comparison's sake, let's take a look what we're you know what kind of numbers we're dealing with so boom okay and then boom so we got elemental particle coming through here oh i missed it i missed it guys i messed up so what i need to do is i need to absorb that with zhongli so if we can get diona okay we've got cry on him we've got cry on him we've got the particles absorbed boom 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 Charge attack. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Oh, it's not letting me do it. Charge, you're such a pain in the butt. Wait, he shielded it again. He's gone and shielded it again. What a bastard. Right, Diona into Razor into Zhongli. Oh, why are you shielding? Why? Is oh my god, look at the damage, guys. Look how many damage hits there are there. Very, very tasty stuff. Right, Diona, we're going to put this back on you. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Zhongli ultimate. Again, no crit. You hate to see it. We'll put this down for some more crit. We'll put these paws down. And then we'll put this down. And now this should give us some charge attack. It's 14.3k. Mm. Okay. I can imagine at level 90 that will be closer to 
16k, maybe 16.5k around that. But the thing with Crescent Pike, guys, again, is you want to absorb the energy particles. And when you've absorbed the energy particles, then immediately you're going to see all these smaller extra bonus hits. You see that you're going to want to have all of that. So I need to have the Zhongli shield on as well. So yes, boom. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Can I get higher than 14k? I'm not critting. Oh, that's a shame. I did not crit there. That's very, very unfortunate. Let's put this shield back on again. Okay, let's put that down. Let's put that down. And then, boom, boom, boom. 14, yeah, it, it does seem like it's stuck at 14k. I wonder how much the ultimate is going to do. 57.8k. So in comparison to the Staff of Homer, you are missing out a lot of extra damage. I would say if I had the Crescent Pike at level 90, a generous guess would be the damage would be like 60k, 61k. So you're still missing out on like 14, 15k damage compared to the Staff of Homer. Staff of Homer will allow your Geo damage hits to still do a lot, even with the physical damage build. And the other thing I should really be showing you guys, I'm being a very irresponsible content creator here, guys. We'll put this back on. We'll put back on the original artifacts and I should show you what the ticking damage actually looks like because the ticking damage is a very, very, very big deal. Can I find my artifacts? Yes, I can. Boom. And then the goblet I'm looking for is here. Boom. The timepiece I'm looking for is boom. Yes, that's the right one. The feather I'm looking for is going to be this geo feather right here. Boom. And then we also have got the flower. All of my artifacts, guys, the screenshots of them or the clip for them will be in the description down below. I'll try to leave an Imja link there as well or a Twitch clip there to show you guys what it actually looks like. And the thing I missed out completely, really, guys, because I was just tunneled completely in on just showing you guys, oh, look at this big PP ultimate damage. Being a rookie here, guys, I want to show you guys my hold E damage, and I want to show you guys also the ticking damage as well. Actually, a better place to show this will be against Ruin Guards, right? Because Child keeps moving around, and he will one-shot my Geo Constructs. So hopefully, I can't remember if I've killed the Ruin Guards here already. If the crystals are here, it should mean I haven't. A, a crystals. Oh, yes, they're there. Ruin God Kun is there. Okay. Wait, this Ruin God Kun is not here. Okay, I did kill this one. And that one is still that. Right, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna switch over, and I'm going to put in Bennett back in. I'm going to put Shao back in because I want EXP for these characters on base yes. My Bennett's only level 70, by the way, guys. So my damage can go higher. My damage can actually go higher because my Bennett is such a low level. His talent levels are not very high either. So I think it can go higher. But I've just basically compensated with the Aquila Favonia on him instead. What am I looking for? Ninkwan. Okay, so let's take a look. What kind of damage are we going to do? We're going to pay to win to get closer faster. We'll put one pillar down, boom. We'll put one construct down, boom. Run through with that with Zhongli. We'll put the shield down. And now, let's see how much ticking damage we're doing. 6.6k? 7k? 6.6k? Wow! Very nice, huh? Very, very nice. And we got some decent energy recharge coming through here as well. If I do hold E... 14.2k? Okay. Alright, I like that. I like that. I'm sure with Bennett, that's going to go even higher up. But, let me show you guys what the ult damage looks like, just with the shield. No boost, no Ninkwan boost. Can you crit, please? 112k, guys. That is just using Zhongli's hold E for some resistance shred. No Ninkwan. No Ninkwan. No Bennett boosts. No potion boosts. No food boosts. And 112k, just a casual 112k. We got our ultimate back immediately as well. That's partially because one-shotting one of those or killing one of those ruined hunters actually refunds a lot of energy to you. So don't be fooled by the energy recharge. You're going to need more energy recharge than that. 37k for the crit, guys. For the non-crit, sorry. It's so small PP damage. It's not good enough, guys. That's just not good enough, is it? That just is not good enough. But our ult has almost recharged here. Very, very nice. And we're going to go and do this again. 112k again. Very, very solid. Right. 
let's go and get some energy recharge back and see how much we can do on normal mobs in the overworld using Bennett and Ningguan. It should be again around 170k. That's my guess. Boom. Boom. Can I kill you, please? Let's just finish you off really quickly with Xiao. I missed. Almost dead there. And that person's a goner now. Okay. No good drops there. Last but not least. Last but not least. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Boom. 163k. It's the same as earlier. You love to see it. Excellent stuff, guys. Staff of Homer is looking mwah, absolutely bellissimo on Zhongli. Gives him more attack. Gives him more tankiness. Gives him an insane amount of crit damage. The one massive drawback of it, though, is you need to have a really, really good crit rate circlet. And those are so, so, so difficult to come by. I've been blessed with one of the best ones in the game. Which is a gladiators one as well, which means it's so versatile you can put it on anyone. There are multiple different builds you can have for Zhongli. You can go for full noblesse if you want to make him fully support and just put loads of HP artifacts on him. You can go for two piece noblesse, two piece arcade pet Petra. I don't think that's very good. The reason why I, th I say that is because for me personally, when I play Zhongli, I play him as a bruiser. When you play him as a bruiser, you want his geo damage in all forms, not just his ultimate. You want his normal attacks. You want his imbued normal attacks like with Bennett when you're elementally imbued you want those normal attacks to still do damage on top of that you want to have your geo damage ticks from your pillars do damage you want to do your hold e shield bonus have damage as well and then on top of that you want your Zhongli ultimates to still do damage so for me gladiators finale and archaic petra is the way to go for almost every single Zhongli unless you're going for a full-on support Zhongli and you don't care about his ult damage or you don't care about his tick damage just go full hp black tassel which is a three star weapon mind you but it will give him a lot of hp so for example if i put every single one of my best hp artifacts on zhongli i'm pretty sure i can easily get over 50k hp so let's take a look here hp let's take a look here i want i have a hp goblet hp hp yep yeah. if we go here that's hp already we have a feather here for hp that's the highest hp feather i have and then for the flower, we're looking at HP again. The highest one that I have is going to be this. So if I went for no sets, guys, and just fully HP, 53k HP with a three-star weapon that is only ascended to the fifth rank. This is not the highest it can go. So we can easily go above 55k HP as well. Now, in terms of artifacts, if I had to change this around... I'm sure I would be able to actually rock a two-piece, two-piece of some kind. So there you go. Two-piece Noblesse, two-piece Archaic Petra with 52k HP. Terrible, terrible attack stat. And of course, terrible crit rate. Crit damage is okay-ish. And then energy recharge not looking very good. But this would be a full-on support Zhongli where you literally hold E and you just stand there and just take a beating for fun. You just stand there forever and just take a beating for fun because this shield is going to be unbreakable. But there you go guys that is a preliminary guide to Zhongli there's many many other things I have not covered yet so many different spears I want to talk about especially the four star spears the new lithic spear is actually arguably better than the jade spear depending on what characters you have at refinement rank 5 that lithic spear is insane I can't wait to show you guys that as well so the Zhongli bible for the full-on builds, for the variation of builds, whether you want to go full Archaic Petra, whether you want to go for full Noblesse, Noblesse plus Archaic, Gladiators, Gladiators, and Archaic Belide, and Archaic Belide, full-on Belide. There's so many different ways to play Zhongli. He is a jack of all trades. What a fantastic character. Arguably, and in my opinion at the very least, I know I might be biased, guys, but I do think this character, because at level 1 or level 90, doesn't matter, his elemental skill allows you to shred the resistances of all characters or all enemies by 20% whether it's level one talent level max talent level one character level 90 character he still has that so for as little to no investment or as much investment as you want that ultimate or not that ultimate well the ultimate as well the ultimate and his elemental skill is still useful and of course he's an absolute god in abyss right now because all the enemies are big enemies that come towards you it's low-key a venti nerf because venti can't do anything to large enemies 
or he, well he can if you know how to knock them up but most people don't know how to knock the large enemies up so doing that with venti is a bit of a pain in the ass especially when the geo vishamps and the enemies like to actually jump on you zhongli is a hard counter to that for me by far the best character in the game with constellations even more head and shoulders above everyone else other than ganyu and then those two ganyu zhongli are kind of in a league of their own and then venti on the side if you're talking about domains but when it comes to end game when it comes to end end game guys like the hypostasis event on maximum difficulty the current abyss super end game stuff i would say zhongli is the most all-rounded most balanced character when i say balanced guys i don't mean in terms of game mechanics he's because he's broken He's broken now, but he's most well-rounded between all the roles, between support, support DPS, main DPS, burst DPS, bruiser. He can do it all now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day and bye-bye.